Hey, it's Darius, and today we're going to talk about two must-know simulation topics for BEC. And just about every day, I'm on the Facebook groups for the CPA exam, like this one, the Fearless CPA exam group, and somebody's asking a question about what they could expect on a simulation for BEC. Number one, variance analysis. And in a previous YouTube video, I go over all of direct material variances. I have another YouTube video all about direct labor variances and a third YouTube video all about overhead variances. So you want to watch those because as you know, there's two direct material variances, two direct labor variances and four factory overhead variances, making a total of eight. With eight variances, that would make for one heck of a sim on BEC. So make sure to look for my YouTube videos on variance analysis. There's three of them and watch them in this order. Direct material variances, watch that one first, then watch the direct labor variance and then the overhead variance video. My second pick for a BEC sim would be on information technology and in particular types of systems and business processes. All right, so here is a BEC simulation on business processes. Choose from the list the best response. Items in the list may be chosen once, more than once, or not at all. So you may end up choosing batch processing twice in two different numbered items, or you may not use it at all. Why don't we go through this list and make sure we understand what these terms mean, starting with parallel conversion. Parallel conversion, you might recall, has to do with the systems development life cycle. And when you're ready to implement the new system, one of the choices is to parallel convert the new system, which means you would still use the old system at full capacity for a given period while you introduce the new system at full capacity for a given period. And that's considered a very safe strategy since the old system is still producing output in case there's major problems with the new system, but it happens to be an expensive and time consuming way to implement a new system. Parallel conversion is a lot more expensive than if you just were to pull the plug on the old system and do what's called a direct changeover. So that's what parallel conversion means. What about this next one down, business intelligence or BI? Business intelligence gives immediate information to who? Top executives. About what? The organization's critical success factors. So this sim, there's no calculations here. It's all word association. And when you see business intelligence, I want you to think of top executives needing immediate information regarding critical success factors. Another thing I want you to know about business intelligence is it's replacing the older system known as the EIS, the Executive Information System, or the Executive Support System model. So this one here, Business Intelligence, is replacing this one, Executive Support System. So let's move down. We'll get to Accounting Information System now. What do we have to know about that? An Accounting Information System, or an AIS, supports day-to-day -day operations by collecting and sorting data about an organization's transactions. An accounting information system is also known as a transaction processing system or TPS. So an AIS, accounting information system, also known as a TPS, a transaction processing system. It's a subunit of an MIS, which is a management information system. So as we start to see where all this is going to fit in, an AIS is a subunit of an MIS management information system. That's the bigger picture. MIS, an accounting information system, is part of an MIS. On the exam, you need to know that an AIS is best suited to solve problems when reporting requirements are structured and well-defined. By structured and well-defined, we mean if something gets processed the same way every time, then an AIS would be very useful accounting information system. So sales might be numerous, but if they're processed the same way every time, then they're structured and well-defined. So an accounting information system would be very useful. So an accounting information system 
is a transaction processing system that supports day-to-day -day operations by collecting and sorting data about the organization's transactions. An accounting information system also includes a general ledger financial reporting system. You would expect that if it's an accounting information system. Now, a decision support system, a decision support system is a type of management information system also, but a decision support system is useful when the problem is not so structured and well-defined. Because if it was a structured and well-defined problem, we would use the accounting information system. A DSS is an interactive system, which means online, real-time, all the information has to be current if it's interactive, and it's useful in solving semi-structured problems. What does that mean? Semi-structured problems are those with a structured portion, which is often solved by the computer, but it also has an unstructured portion, which requires management's insight and judgment. So a decision support system is useful to solve semi-structured problems with real-time data and requires a manager to solve part of the problem where the computer could solve maybe the rest of it. But notice that if it's a decision support system, it requires human involvement. It's not a system that substitutes for the human. Now, while we're talking about a decision support system, let's mention an expert system and the fact that an expert system relies on artificial intelligence to imitate the reasoning of a human, of a human expert. So you could have a person solve the problem, but if there's a shortage, if there's no person around to do it, then if you have an expert system, it's already designed with artificial intelligence to imitate the reasoning of a human expert in a given field. So remember this, expert system, you don't need to have the human involvement because of artificial intelligence. But a decision support system, you still need the human involvement. The computer can solve part of the problem, right, the structured part, but the unstructured part, you would still need a person. All right, let's talk about artificial intelligence now, because that's one of the choices here on the list. Well, AI attempts to imitate human decision making. Historically, computer software worked through a series of what's called if-then conditions, in which every operation has exactly two possible outcomes, yes or no, on or off, true or false. AI, on the other hand, includes what's called neural networks, a very popular, growing, and important term. Neural networks are a collection of processing elements working together to process information much like the human brain, including the ability to learn from previous situations and similar experiences. Why? To imitate human decision making. So the whole idea of artificial intelligence within a system is to imitate human decision making and substitute for it. So if you see the term neural networks, I want you to associate that with artificial intelligence. AI would probably be the right answer. So artificial intelligence includes neural networks in order to imitate human decision making. Let's go on to batch processing at the top of this column here. Batch processing is where transactions are accumulated and submitted to the computer as a single batch. It does not allow for interactive processing because we're not processing in real time each transaction that happens. So there's often a time delay between when a transaction happens and when the master files are updated. Because if the transaction happened earlier in the day, but those transactions have not yet been submitted to the computer as a single batch, then the master files are not up to date. And the CPA exam often makes you compare batch processing to online real-time systems. With online real-time systems, or sometimes called interactive systems, the system processes each transaction as the user enters it. 
the user is in direct communication with the computer and gets immediate processing feedback if it's an online real-time or interactive system. Just the opposite of batch processing. Let's talk about volatility. File volatility is a term that refers to the relative frequency with which records in a database are added, deleted, or changed during a specified period. So it's a good term to know volatility when it comes to a database and the idea that certain records in a database are added, deleted, or changed more than others and the ones that are added, deleted, or changed more than others have more volatility and certain records that are not changed much have very low volatility. Let's talk a little big data. Well, that's the analysis of structured and unstructured data that can be mined to reveal relationships. That's the key. We want to reveal relationships and dependencies or predict outcomes and behaviors. That's what big data does for us. We have all this data. What can we do with it? We can mine it to reveal relationships and dependencies. We can try to predict outcomes and behaviors. Companies use data mining and data analytics and big data to help make better business decisions, such as what products to have on hand, in which locations, at different times of the year. Every business is all about big data now, even sports, right? My son works on big data projects for Major League Baseball. And one of the things that every team wants to know is if there's a one and one count on a hitter, what pitch is this hitter likely to swing at? And that helps the pitcher and the catcher make a better decision as to what to throw. So big data, it's all about revealing relationships and predicting outcomes and behaviors. All right, let's look at the enterprise resource planning system now, the ERP system. What's that? Well, that's one database that attempts to link all of the organization's applications. So our management information system might include many subunits, such as the AIS, the Accounting Information System. We might have a separate system for manufacturing, one for logistics, one for human resources. Well, with an ERP, with an Enterprise Resource Planning System, all these systems will share data and coordinate activities. What does that mean? Well, if manufacturing is about to begin, the AIS, the Accounting Information System, would tell manufacturing that, hey, raw material inventory is low, and the system will issue a purchase order for those materials. Because an ERP system should allow these back office subunits to communicate with each other on a timely basis. All right, let's talk a little distributed processing versus centralized processing. And it pays to know the history. In the early days of technology, all data was processed and stored in a single location mostly due to costs. So if you had a large company, all the data that was processed was done in one room, in one office, but mostly because of cost of having to buy extra computers, and that was very expensive in those days. So probably everything you had prior to, let's say, 1995 was centralized processing. And that resulted in strong controls over processing and very secure data because all functions were located in one office. You never heard of any data security breaches prior to 1995 or so because all the data was so secure since all the functions were located in one place. Now, once the prices of computers started to come down, then you saw an attempt to decentralize the processing. Now, over the last 25 years, companies can afford to have computers storing and processing data at their branch offices in many different locations and that's an attempt to decentralize the processing. And there are both advantages as well as disadvantages to decentralize or distribute the processing. So with distributed processing, what should you know? Well, data would be dispersed to match business requirements. Therefore, data access is much faster. You can get the data you need much faster if it's already designed to match your business requirements. That's faster than centralized processing because users use only a subset of company data. 
So data processing speed will improve too. Not only will data access improve, but data processing speed will improve because processing is going to occur at multiple sites. New sites can be added without affecting operations at other sites. Those are all the advantages of distributed processing over centralized processing. And you got to know on a CPA exam the advantages and disadvantages of the centralized versus the distributed processing. Now, as for the disadvantages of the distributed processing, well, data management activities becomes more complex to manage because while security was easy when everything was done in one room, now you have a security issue because you've got data being processed all over the place. And what about backup and recovery procedures? You're not only looking at one particular location, you have a lot of remote locations that need to be backed up and restored when needed. And with distributed processing, you have a higher security risk because there's more entry points to the network and they need to be controlled compared to centralized processing where it's all done in one room. Okay, so what's value added network? That's the only one we haven't talked about. It's a privately owned wide area network that provides reliable, high speed and secure transmission of data. While the internet can provide some of the same for free or far less cost than a value added network, why do people still use a value added network? Because they actually provide value. They compete with the internet, which is tough to do, right? But they provide their customers with security for data transmissions and also provide translation software for things like EDI transactions, electronic data interchange. So here we go for each numbered item, choose from the list the best response. Items in the list may be chosen once, more than once or not at all. Here we go with number one, Flare Corp's transaction processing system collects and sorts data about the organization's transactions in order to support day-to-day -day operations and that system also includes a general ledger slash financial reporting system. And which one do you think would be the best choice here? What kind of system collects and sorts data about organization transactions to support day-to-day -day operations? And the system also includes general ledger financial reporting. That's got to be accounting information system, right? Sure. So the answer to one is accounting information system. AIS supports day-to-day -day operations by collecting and sorting data about an organization's transactions. It's also known as a transaction processing system, an AIS. That's something to know, that a transaction processing system is another term for an AIS. AIS typically has a transaction processing system to support day-to-day -day operations. It also has a general ledger financial reporting system because after all, it's an accounting information system. And something else to know, an AIS is a subsystem of an MIS, a management information system, and an AIS is best suited to solve problems when reporting requirements are structured and well-defined. For example, sales may be numerous, but if they're always processed the same way, then an AIS would be a good fit. So what does it mean for reporting requirements to be structured and well-defined? It means that they're always done the same way way. That's what it means to be structured and well-defined. That means a computer can handle it very well if it's structured. Number two now, Haynes Corp has an interactive system, that means it's online real-time, that is useful in solving semi-structured problems. What are semi-structured problems? Those with a structured portion and those with an unstructured portion. And it tells us those with a structured portion are often solved by the computer. Sure, we know about that because anything that's structured can be handled by a computer. And those with an unstructured portion, it tells us, require management's insight and judgment. So, we have an interactive system useful in solving semi-structured problems. What would be the type of system we're looking at here? That would be a decision support system or DSS. A DSS examines the relevant data and presents management with choices between alternative courses of action. And a DSS is an interactive system useful in solving these semi-structured problems, those with a structured portion, which the computer can solve, and those with an unstructured portion, which is solved by management's insight and judgment. Notice the computer doesn't solve the entire problem in a DSS, 
because it doesn't say that it's based on artificial intelligence. It's not an expert system. Number three now, Tesla develops their information system using neural networks to process information much like the human brain, such as the ability to learn from previous situations to imitate human decision making. Now what I tell you, whenever you see the term neural networks on the CPA exam, you're thinking artificial intelligence. Because AI attempts to imitate human decision making. We said historically computer software worked through a series of if-then conditions in which every operation had exactly two possible outcomes. But AI includes neural networks, a collection of processing elements working together to process information much like the human brain, including learning from previous situations. The ability to learn from previous situations and similar experiences to imitate human decision making. That's what artificial intelligence is all about. All right, let's try number four. Collins Corp has a system that uses artificial intelligence attempting to imitate the reasoning of a purchasing manager in order to automatically place orders with the best combination of price, freight, and delivery time from a database of suppliers that is constantly changing as terms and conditions change. So what's Collins Corp doing? They're using a system that automatically places orders by using artificial intelligence to imitate the reasoning of a person. A purchasing manager would be a person. They're attempting to imitate the reasoning of a human. What kind of system uses artificial intelligence that could possibly combine things like the best price with the freight and the delivery time from a database of suppliers that's constantly changing? That's an expert system. An expert system attempts to imitate the reasoning of a human expert in a given field, in this case purchasing. It's useful for addressing unstructured problems where usually you would need a human, but there's a shortage of people who are an expert, so they'll use this expert system. Unstructured refers to the fact that a human would normally be needed to combine price, freight, and delivery time from a database, especially if that database of suppliers is constantly changing. But because the expert system uses what? Artificial intelligence, it attempts to imitate the reasoning of a purchasing manager. That's the point of an expert system. So the difference between an expert system and a decision support system is that the expert system doesn't need a human, where the decision support system might rely on the computer to do the structured portion, but then you would have to have the human do the unstructured portion if it's a decision support system. But an expert system is capable of possibly doing the entire thing without any human involvement because of the use of artificial intelligence. Now this sim has as many as 15 numbered items. We've done the first four together and in the comments section of this YouTube video you can let me know if you want me to upload the rest of it.